Oh, you're nothing but a slowpoke. You didn't hear that, did you? You're nothing but a slowpoke. So good to welcome you this morning. I just got word a few minutes ago that there are 42 of us in Indianapolis at the service there this morning. So if you are worshiping with us on a first time, that's why you see a lot of empty seats. It's because we've got those 42 in Indianapolis. And I need to remind you that the 4th of July is going to be a big day around here. We're going to have a community cookout. And uh, there will not be any charge. And it'll start at 11 o'clock. That's on the July the 4th. Turn with me, if you will, this morning for our scripture. I don't know if you have it to put it on the board or not. Well, you do. Okay. Oh, all right. Uh, it's from um, Timothy, the fourth chapter, and beginning with verse 6. For I am already being poured out like a drink offering, and the time has come for my departure. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Now there is in store for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day. And not only to me, but also to all who have longed for his appearing. Do your best to come to me quickly. For Demas, because he loved the world, has deserted me and has gone to Thessalonica. Questions has gone to Galatia and Titus to Talmatia. Only Luke is with me. Get Mark and bring him with you because he is helpful to me in my ministry. I sent Tychicus to Ephesus. When you come, bring the cloak that I left with Carpus at Troas and my scrolls, especially the parchments. Alexander the metal worker did me a great deal of harm. The Lord will repay him for what he has done. You too should be on your guard against him because he strongly opposed our message. As at my first defense, no one came to my support, but everyone deserted me. May it not be held against them. But the Lord stood at my side and gave me strength so that through me the message might be fully proclaimed and all the Gentiles might have it. And I was delivered from the lion's mouth. The Lord will rescue me from every evil attack and will bring me safely to his heavenly kingdom. To him be glory forever and ever. Amen. Pastor Terry has had as his theme for these past few Sundays the uh, word shattered. I, I'd like for you for just a few seconds to uh, imagine that you're a teenager. Are you doing it? Imagine you are a teenager, and then add this to it also, and you're in youth camp. You're a teenager, and you're in youth camp. And the speaker steps up to speak. Probably not as dynamic as uh, Pastor Terry, 
And he's going to be preaching youth camp sometime this summer. Uh, but the speaker is very solemn. And he says, remember your creator in the days of your youth. Before the days of trouble come and the years approach when you will say, I find no pleasure in them. We, we so often talk about, and, and it's, it's okay, about the blessings that are ours because we're Christians. But then sometimes we seem to forget that there's another side to that story that isn't as exciting as the joys and the pleasures that come with being a Christian. There are some times when experiences come along that shatter us a little bit. And oftentimes we are tempted, or at least some of us are, if a, something comes that shatters us, that God is punishing us for something we've done wrong. I was standing by the side of a hospital bed and the patient was a retired lady pastor. She had spent her years pastoring small congregations in small rural areas. And now here she was in the hospital and I had the honor of being her pastor. Tears started down her face and she looked up at me and she said, Pastor, is God punishing me for something I've done? And if I ever felt so secure, if I ever felt so right to quote God like this, I said, absolutely not. This is part of life. You know, when we were born, we entered into an aging process. The first day that we drew a breath in our body, we began the shattering steps. There's a man in the Old Testament that God deeply admired. And uh, he was a well-to-do man. And I don't know how much about how he was respected in his community, but I just imagine he was highly respected. He had all that he needed to have a successful and comfortable life. But then all of a sudden, it all disappeared. And the, because he was a Christian, he lost everything that he had. His body even worked against him. It shattered and put him in a constant pain that he endured 24 hours a day if they were the days like that then. And he had three friends, or at least he thought they were friends, that would come by and uh, try to analyze why he was suffering like this. And finally, they came up with the agreement, which seemed to be the easiest one for them. You sinned somehow. You, sin is causing all of this in your life. But they were so wrong. They were so wrong. This man was suffering like he was because he was a Christian. I don't know where we would go on this planet this morning and find people who are suffering constant pain today because they're Christians. 
They're being mistreated, and we'll get to that with the Apostle Paul in a little bit. But Job, one statement he makes is very poignant. He said, man is born to trouble as sure as the sparks fly upward. Simple statement, but so true. And uh, our bodies begin losing a struggle often with constant pain. This is a commonness for all of us. I uh, was called by a pastor friend of mine in uh, Charleston. And he said, uh, I have a 16-year-old boy and his parents that are in Shriners Hospital. Would you go visit them? I went and found them. And this 16-year-old boy was linked up to all kinds of devices. And his mom and dad were sitting there with him. But in the course of the conversation, the dad said, I wonder what people who are not Christians do when they find themselves in circumstances like this. And in spite of it all, that, that young man, 16 years of age, had undergone surgery to uh, relocate something in his joints that had not Fig, not fit in correctly. And they were so positive. Peter one time got a little disgusted with Jesus, I think. Because Jesus asked him three times, do you love me? Oh, Peter said, you know I do. Do you love me, Peter? I oh, know, yes, I do. Peter, don't you love me? Yes, I do. Well, he said, I told you all of that. I questioned you in all of that. Because here's what I want to tell you. Well, I did have it here. But anyway, uh, you mind a little rest? <laughs> Want to take a little nap? <laughs> oh, well. Uh, but anyway, Jesus said to him, I tell you, the, oh, here it is. I tell you the truth. I tell you the truth. Now I've questioned you about if you love me. Now I'm going to tell you the truth. When you were younger, you dressed yourself and went where you wanted. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands and someone will dress you and lead you where you do not want to go. The shattering that comes sometimes with age. And there's a beautiful hope in all of our painful times. I guess it's kind of in the future, but it still is exciting and beautiful. John tells us, we will be God's people at that time, at a certain time. We will be God's people. And God himself will be with us and be our God. He will wipe every tear from our eyes. There will be no more death or mourning 
or crying or pain. For the old order of things has passed away. Beautiful thought, beautiful hope. We all have it. No matter how severe, how deep our constant pain might be, we have a hope which those who do not know Christ do not know him. Andre Crouch wrote a song years ago in which he put the words, if I'd never known any troubles, I'd never know that God could solve them. Through it all. Why don't you sing that with me? Through it all, through it all, I've learned to trust in Jesus. I've learned to trust in God. Through it all, through it all, I've learned to depend upon his word. One more time, through it all, through it all, I've learned to trust in Jesus. I've learned to trust in God. Through it all, through it all, I've learned to depend upon his word. My, what a, what a wonderful confidence that is that uh, we, we have. But let's, let's look a little bit now at uh, what uh, Paul was describing to Timothy. And he, he must have kept a journal of all of his experiences through the years. For at one time, he talked about some shattering, shattering experiences that he experienced. He said, I have been in prison frequently, been flogged severely, been exposed to death again and again. Five times I received from the Jews the 40 lashes minus one. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Three times I was shipwrecked. I have been in danger from rivers. And I spent the night and a day on the open sea. Three times I was shipwrecked. I said that. I have been danger from bandits, in danger from my own countrymen, in danger from the Gentiles, in danger in the city, in danger in the country, in danger at sea, and in danger from false brothers, brethren. And that's not the end of it. He goes on and on and on. How his life at times was being shattered. And now he's writing to Timothy. And he's pouring out the final days of his life. Kind of just letting it go. And he's not having much success in anyone standing around to encourage him. Demas, a friend of I don't know how many years, has forsaken him. Having loved the present world, but we don't have all of the insight into the other things that convinced Demas to forsake Paul. Maybe he didn't want to go through the things that Paul had gone through. I doubt if many of us would line up to go through all that the Apostle Paul went through. And uh, he continues 
to uh, talk about it's cold where he is. And he'd forgotten his cloak. He left it at another city. And so he's sending word for it to be brought to him that he might have a little bit of comfort when, Mar or when Timothy or Mark comes. And, uh, then, and then this, this silversmith by the name of uh, Alexander seemed to trail Paul everywhere he went. And after Paul would preach, Alexander would get up and explain how he was wrong. And Paul said he was successful sometimes, for he said he did me a lot of harm. And Paul had to face that. But now he's at the place that he can no longer, he no longer has the strength to go preaching to the Gentiles to starting churches in cities where there was no church. He's pouring out his life finally. He's saying, uh, I have fought a good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Now there is in store for me the crown of righteousness. He didn't lose his fervent relationship with God. And I, I've met people from time to time, and so have you, who are Christians, but are going through some very, very difficult times. One of my favorite writers through the years was Dr. Criswell. He was a pastor of the First Baptist Church in Dallas, Texas, which was the largest Southern Baptist church in the world at that time. And he told the story of a, a businessman who came to him during the Depression and said, Dr. Tiswell, I've lost everything. Dr. Criswell said, I looked at him and said, no, you haven't. Oh, yes, I have. No, you haven't. Have you lost your wife? Have you lost your children? Have you lost your grandchildren? And the answer was no to all of those. Dr. Criswell said, you haven't lost everything. God's left a little something there for you to hold on to. God's left a little something there to keep you going. And I wonder how many times you've been at that point where you said, can't go on any farther. And I was thinking about, you know, when people get saved, oh, how happy they are. How excited they are, how enthusiastic they are. And we encourage them. But we don't tell them, like this speaker told those youth, get ready for what's ahead. Because it's going to come. And you're going to need to be able to handle it. And so oftentimes, new Christians have run into a, a problem, have run into a circumstance, have run into constant pain, and they said, where did I miss it? Where did I miss the turn in the road? Why am I going through this? But God has an answer. God has an answer. And Paul had it. And here was his answer. And through all of this that he's mentioned here to uh, Timothy. But the Lord stood by my side and gave me strength so that through me the message might be fully proclaimed and all the Gentiles might hear it. 
The Lord will rescue me from every evil attack and will bring me safely to his heavenly kingdom. To him be glory. To him be glory forever and ever. So if your body has been shattered and you're in constant pain, lift up your eyes. There's a God who cares. There's a Jesus who cares. And all of us somewhere in our troubled times have a holy book somewhere close to us. This one right here. And it declares, we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses but we have one who has been and ever been tempted and has been tempted in every way, just as we are. And yet he survived without sin. Now, let us then approach the throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. Father, speak to us today. I don't know all that anyone is going through. There may be some shattered bodies, shattered lives, shattered faith here this morning. And uh, Joe, my, if he had a, a congregation to go to, I don't know. I wonder what he would have told them when he was going through his deep, deep trouble because he was a Christian. And thank you for giving us that strength and faith and encouragement and to remind us over and over and over again that pain and shattering comes to all people. But the Christians are different because you have control and sponsor them. So now touch everyone's here. Give our people in Indianapolis a safe trip home when they come. And we'll praise you forever and ever and ever. Amen.